I pull up and kill shit. What? Six feet. All right, six feet going deep. It's Nictorious with. What's up, boys? FIFA Castro to do. <laughs> All right, FIFA Castro. Oh, what, how do how do people like usually call you? Like, FIFA just Castro or FIFA? Yeah, that's my nickname since um 13 years old. I was you're, in high school. Were you playing a lot of soccer? Yeah, and also um the group that I was in, mm. only kid that played soccer, and it was just FIFA. All of them played soccer. Not only me. Oh, is it because you're Colombian? Colombia. Yeah. So, so how was it like growing up in Colombia? Bro, how to really? Or actually, what what do you, what do you do first of all? Right now, I do music, of course. Mm. I'm an artist. I got a Two Instagrams, at FIFA Castro and People Dreaming. Mm -hmm. um, What's the other one about? Bro, it's a charity thing. I just catch people sleeping, edit the pics. I'll show you real quick. Edit the pictures, and uh, the money goes to a nonprofit to feed the homeless. But how do you get money from that? Donations. Oh, for real? Yeah, I mean, I don't get money from that one. It's just a straight charity. Oh. Uh, you know? Um, Wait, I don't understand. People, it's, 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 it's still learning. Uh, it's called People Dreaming. Let me show you. Stupid, but it's funny, but it's crazy. I catch fool sleeping, you see? And then I just edit it on my phone, you know? Oh, is that like, I saw a video of some guy sleeping on the, on the, on the bus or the train, and then there was like a bunch of like stuff happening in the background. Is that, is that why? Yeah, that was mine too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, know, that's the video I was talking about. I'm trying to fuck, you know, people getting ro like robbed or something. Is that one of these maybe? No, 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 it was, it was on your page. Oh yeah, yeah. I, mean, I get it from there. You know, sometimes I promote it on the on the other on my own, my own page. Uh, but yeah, people just doing it right here, you know. They feed the homeless, you know, whatever. So where does the money go? It goes towards the homeless. Yeah. So like, what 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 made you think of doing that? Bro, it's a pretty crazy story, Don. I think I get really like, like, intimate. I guess you know. Um, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, basically, let's like, go deep. let's go let's go deep. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Let's gonna start from the beginning. Mm. You know, some things they're going to say are going to sound kind of crazy. Right. Um, but I believe in them, you know, I feel you, whatever. Like, you look at me however you want, but that's what I believe and that's what I've experienced. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't judge. When I was five years old, I remember looking in the mirror, you know? And I felt like um, this energy, yo. Like, I felt it, like, <sighs> this crazy energy, yo. And I really, like, I felt greatness. And mm -hmm. I felt, like, like, crazy. Like, oh, my God, what is this? Like, powerful, like, you know, boom. And the energy was telling me, you're gonna be great, you're gonna be the biggest, you're gonna be the greatest. Like, that's what it was telling me. Mm. And that energy, what I figured was that was like, like me, yo, like in the future or something, or like a spirit that was like, somehow like me, you know? Yeah. Telling me that I don't know if it was a vision, I don't know if it was the kid's imagination, I don't know. The point is, I believed it. I ran to my dad and I told him, I was like, Papi, uh, in the mirror, there's a, there's, you know, whatever, I'm gonna be the greatest, I'm gonna be the greatest, I'm gonna be the greatest. Mm. And my dad's like, oh, you're gonna be the greatest? If you believe it, then you will believe it. Like, they believe it. Uh -huh. You know? Um, and I believed it. But I thought it was going to be through soccer. Like, you know, that's my passion, yo. You were playing soccer a lot as a kid? As a kid, bro. And I got trained by um, professional coaches, yo. Like, coaches that train World Cup teams. They've been to the World Cup. Mm -hmm. Trained the highest professional players, you know, whatever. Um, my dad had a lot of money growing up. It was part of the cartels. Mm -hmm. um, I'm talking about how, like, a really privileged childhood, like... Um, most and, of the most of the Colombians I know that grew up in Colombia, they did I grew up like really poor. Yeah, I grew up different, bro. I had to go to school and I had two bodyguards in my classroom. For real? Yeah, everywhere I go, bodyguards, bulletproof cars, shit like that. That's why that's why we left because they were gonna it's too dangerous. Yeah. Because it was airbrush cracking down, people were getting killed, but that's like we're getting out of here. Mm. Um, but yeah, I got trained like hardcore, like seven. I'm talking about like. Every day, like my dad would pay his coaches to live with us mm -hmm. for like a year, a year and a half, paying like a hundred thousand and the sure. training, yeah, every day. Um, until I was like seventeen, bro, I was um playing at the highest level, like um, basically pro, bro. Like I was getting calls to play in Colombia, mm -hmm. but I couldn't work on my papers. Um, I got scholarships to a lot of schools, bro. I had a really good ACT score and I had soccer skills. Mm -hmm. I had a thirteen ninety my ACT. But in Colombia or in America? In America, I oh. came when I was ten. Mm. So I just, you know, the transition over here, we kept playing, whatever. Yeah. Um, were you, were, did your family still have money like that, like, when they were here? Some, a little bit. Um, mm. We had money, yeah. But, like, we never, my dad never showed it. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, um, I don't know, probably like $50 million. Oh, okay. Either, either way, my dad would only spend 20 bucks, like, on toys a month. That was, like, the thing. Just 20 bucks, we go to toys once a month. Like, he never, like, 
spoiled us. Like I never really felt the money. Yeah. I don't know if it was because he was not trying to like to bring attention it. or just oh. like trying to teach me something. Yeah. You know. Um, but but did you learn something from it? Yeah, the value of the dollar, bro. You can't just you got value because now we fucking almost lost everything. Mm-hmm. Got to get to that. Um, so, right, the scholarships, you know, whatever. Um, I'm thinking about going to Colombia. I have no papers though. You're moving to Colombia. I was thinking about it because uh. I have like bro soccer set. Yeah. Like play like in the national team, bro. Like type of shit. Mm. Mm. And um, that's when my parents go to prison, bro. When I was seventeen, they go to prison for conspiracy to commit financial structuring, what which is, is um, it's a form of money laundering. Oh, for like the money that they had. Yeah, supposedly like they were still dealing with like some supposedly, mm. allegedly with some um, cocaine people, and they're helping them watch the money. Mm. Those things are very hard to prove. Like they got charged with conspiracy, which is thinking about it, not even doing it. They never got caught doing it. Yeah, just conspiracy. Isn't the conspiracy still like a like a hard like time that they give you? It's still federal, and um, yeah, they got eight years. Um, yeah, no. So, um, well, I don't understand that because doesn't a lot of people like don't a lot of people think about doing bad shit like all the time? Yeah, but America's the only country that has that law, the the conspiracy. For yeah, they have to prove it though. You know, like. But still, it's, like, circumstantial. But, like, how can you read someone's mind thinking, like, oh, they were thinking about doing this? Because they took steps to do it. Like, they have, you know, they took steps to actually do it. Uh. There's a little bit of evidence that they were leaning to, toward doing that. Mm. Like, an example, like, my kid, in my dad's case, um, may I say because it's online anyways. Mm. Um, but structuring is that you're making deposits under 10000 like, systematically to avoid, like, a certain, like, tax thing. Yeah. Kind of tax form. So... Um, they got like, all his bank records for like seven years, and there mm. was like, just like eight thousand, five thousand. They were saying that it was systematically. Yeah. And they, you know, the jury. Um, I mean, actually, he never had a case, um, yeah. because he he. He pled guilty right away, so to avoid deportation, and to give mom a deal, and, and like us to let, to leave us alone, you know. Mm. So he never went to court. I mean, to, to case though, to, to actual like. Jury or whatever, um, but they convinced the judge whatever like, that he was doing that. And mm-hmm. they gave him eight years, and um, he had one prior before. You know, he had he actually got arrested for that like in two thousand. Mm-hmm. We we're still living in Colombia, so um, the federal court they have a systems point. So you've been arrested like two times. They at like certain points they, they give you a guideline for how many years you go to prison for. Mm-hmm. So they gave him eight years, um, but during that time, bro, it was like I was waiting to go to Colombia. Like I was gonna go to Colombia in six months, mm-hmm. and then boom. You they have take anyone away. you can live with in Colombia? I didn't even them. I didn't have my papers. Uh, but we were supposed to get them. I was crazy in it, but then that happened, you know, I got taken away. Mm. Um and I still was gonna go. Like I was like, oh, I'm gonna go to Colombia, I don't care about my papers, I'll just go play with it. Mm. But then I was the oldest one in the house. At that point my parents go to prison. I got two little sisters and two little brothers. But you couldn't have gone like deported or anything? Me? Yeah. Nah, I didn't know crimes with my parents. But I actually almost got deported too. Cause I got arrested a few times for some other stuff. Mm. Um, but at that moment, I was pretty much safe. Like I was, um, what you call, a legal alien. Uh-huh. You have some rights, but you don't. Like, yeah. I remember I was coming <clears> here. That's why. That's why I started going to school. Um, the beginning, cause you know they they, they went to prison, or whatever, and I started working. I actually got a good job. Um, um, working at Tootsie's strip club. Mm-hmm. You know, just working on the floor, just oh, doing. Since then, since back then. <laughs> oh, that. I was the youngest one there, cause I think it was um. My dad called in a favor. Uh-huh. My, there's a person that works there, my dad's cousin. He's like, yo, look at the situation. Like, uh-huh. We need him to get money. Like, we need him to work there for us. And my, my cousin's like, yeah, for sure. And I still work with him, you know, different clothes or whatever. That's a whole different story. They, um, that was, there was like, nothing wrong with that? Like, you could just do it? To work in the trick clubs? Yeah, like, like just, like. Bro, connection, work. you could do anything, yeah. Wait, how, no, I mean, like, how old were you, like, when you were doing that? Is 19. That, oh, oh, never I think they got arrested at 17, but um, yeah, cause the I was, first, yeah, let's just go with time. Like, 17, they got arrested. Um, that whole first year, we were we had the house, like, they were like, Yo, you keep the house at a really big house in Kendall mm. for one year, and like, no rent. So, for one year, I was just like, not doing anything. You didn't have to pay rent at all, no, because we the house was ours. Oh, and um, they have like Florida has really good like homeowners rules, like laws or whatever, like, they protect mm. you a lot. So, we just kept filing petitions and petitions for one year. Mm. Um, just to let us stay there, like to for like kids and whatever, you know. Yeah. I was technically an adult though. Um, 
So they didn't put like an adult to live in there? What you guys were just like... My like, grandparents came through after. Oh. Uh, yeah. But still, it's like... They don't work. Yeah. You know? Were they here? Like, do they live here? Yeah. Or did they, they, they like... Just, were they from Colombia? The, from Colombia, they came with us um, when we moved over here, you know? Mm. And, um... They had his own little house over there, but then we couldn't pay it, so, you know, they moved back with us, you know? Yeah. They lost that house, so then they came with us. So what happened after the year? I started working, um... Doing collection calls with my cousin. Mm. And that wasn't enough money, though. It's really cheap, you know? Mm. Um, so Wait, it wasn't enough? Yeah, I did it for one year. Uh-huh. That's when I work, started going to working at Tootsie's. Um, that's when I made the real money. That's when we like, were able to move out mm-hmm. and get like, a nice house, the one that we're in right now. Um, but basically, like, I worked my ass off, bro. Like, from 18 to, to not really, bro. I'm working like crazy. So um, that was like the motivation, like your, your brothers and sisters? Basically, and, and my, my family, yeah. You know, also like you have to. I'm very challenge based, like you know, like like if I saw it like as a freaking life struggle, mm. like oh, be like eat me up. So I just saw it as a challenge, you know, just like fuck, like yeah. So you gotta like, overcome it. Yeah, just like a, like you know what, just do it, like just just go. Were there ever days where you're like, damn, you know, like you can't, you can't take it anymore? Yeah, bro. I was, but I actually tried to kill myself. For real? Yeah, when I was 23. Um, so I started working like crazy, bro, like. Talking about every day, every day, every day, every day. Um, I'm working the night shifts. Um, I ended up getting fired from Tootsie's for for soliciting prostitution. Cause basically, like my job was um the the way I made money was I walk around the club mm-hmm. and I talk to people and I be like, yo, so what do you want, bro? Like, I see you have a ring here. Like, obviously you have some fun. Like, what type of girl you want? You like blondes? You like Asians? Like, come on, bro. Like, come on, just have fun, bro. Like, yeah. Whatever money um, you have in your pocket, when you left your house, you were willing to spend it. Like, there's no price on this fun. Like, just have fun. Like, you can't put a price on it. You're going to go home, and you're going to be, oh, like, this is what I wanted. Yeah. You're here for a reason. Yeah, you, you love your wife, whatever, but just, there's something missing. Like, you know, like, mm-hmm. boom, and then and they'll be like, yeah, yeah, you know. And um, over there in Tootsie's, they go to fine bro, models. The half hour is 600. For? Yeah, for a half hour. That's like one... No, I guess you want to put uh, it that way. Uh, and then... Were the girls down with that? Yeah, 600. They'll give me... From that 600, they'll give me 150. Mm-hmm. And then if the, the room was 1,000. So from that, they'll give me like 250, 300. You know, I just do it like two, three times a night. And I make a lot of money, bro. I was making like 500 bucks a day. Easy. Uh-huh. Plus a check, you know? Yeah. But then... um. There was a lot of jealousy, bro. Because I was the youngest one there. And you're making those money? All the girls liked me. Um, freaking the rappers started going there. Like, Future will go there. Freaking a lot of rappers. Mm-hmm. Basketball players like Haslam. T-Pain, actually, bro. Sort of guy, bro. T-Pain sees me in person. He he was going by name, Sebastian. Right. He was nothing to speak. This was like when I was no music. But he used to go there every week with his girl. And they just get like a stripper and go like a room and shit. I don't know what the hell. They're like weird like that, you know? Oh, for real? Look at yeah. Um, no, no, I feel, I feel you. No, because this is like how you were saying it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, I was just the, the the hip guy, the cool guy, you know? And the, yeah. the, even the people that would work, the, the customers that would go there, they'd be like, yo, what's this little kid doing here? Like, he must be like a little boss or like, he must be doing like something right. Like, you know? But yeah. I was already 20, you know, at that point. So, like, whatever. Um, And then they were just looking for me, like, but then I was taking away the money from the people who were working there for like 15 years. Mm-hmm. The bosses, whatever, the real managers, like, um, I remember like the, the breaking point was like this one customer that would always come and give this guy like 200 tip just for like- A 20? 200. 200, oh. You go like once a week and you just go to 200, oh yeah, yeah, my friend, just in front, sit him down, like, hey, what's up, man? Like a floor man, yeah, sit down. And then he's like, no, I want to talk to Sebastian, you know? Mm-hmm. And then he just got furious, you know? Oh. And then he told me like, okay, you go, we're still working, but you cannot go in the VIP no more. Just downstairs, you know? Uh-huh. Um, but I still made money. And I was fucking girls that the manager wanted to fuck. Right. Like, really fine, pretty girls. Like, pretty, pretty, pretty beautiful girls, you know? And they were, like, young, 18, bro. And the managers were, like, 40, but they were all crazy, you know? So the girls didn't really... Not all of them liked that. Some did, you know? Some like they liked that craziness. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> a lot of jealousy, but they set me up. They set you up? Yep. Camera, everything. I saw it until I was... I saw it, like, look, like it was... I look back, I look back on it, it was, it was pretty, pretty obvious. What? Um, they had this one girl. Yeah, that's that she was um, <laughs> caught in the store. Yeah, there was one girl. Her name was Sasha. Uh-huh. 
Um, she was really pretty. And she started hitting on me, like, for, like, two days. Like, oh, my God, like, you know, you're, you're, like, I want to be your, your girlfriend. Like, you know, you're so amazing. Like, wow, like, I want you to be my mind. So, you know, I started, like, sweet talking to me. Yeah. And I let me grab her ass, started grabbing my, like, you know, she started grabbing me, like, stuff like that, whatever. Mm. Well, there was an elevator. Was that, like, normal for you? Yeah. Both so many girls. Mm. I mean, I still got a lot of girls. That's why I saw my snatch was lit. <laughs> Posting girls out there. Uh-huh. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, for the videos, all, all the girls I get are free. You know, uh-huh. you know, I do a few videos there. The girls are twerking and shit, they're free. Uh-huh. Um, I got follow you on Snapchat. <laughs> yeah, I had it actually. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, I, I did see that. Right. Yeah, right, yeah. That's why actually my biggest fan base is Snapchat, bro. For real? I've been doing that nonstop for three years, not one day. All right, um, what about Instagram stories? Like, have you put anything there? Cause yeah. Like, I know you can't like put too much like nudity or anything there. I still put it. Yeah, I mean, the one I have now is like straight and literally like, what should I show you? I mean, but it's the thing is that the Snapchat, um, I like their features better, bro. Like, like I just, I'm so used to working with the Snapchat. Like the face stuff? Just like the way it works. Like, just like, so comfortable with just taking a picture. Oh, yeah. You know, whatever, like the style, you know? So what I'm doing is, um, I'm doing the Snapchat saving it and then just posting it on the, on the Instagram, you know? That's from March though. Wait, what do you mean? Yeah, I'll, I'll just save them on the Snapchat and then post them oh. on the Instagram. Oh, that's With the whole little story, you know? Boom. Uh. Yeah, just some craziness, you know? And that's when I, ha- that's when I had my kiosk. Yeah, what was your kiosk for? The Vapors. Oh, that's where you got that one? Yeah. Not sure, it's a cheap one. But yeah, but I had it, I'll show you right now. I have this one. Miami X Vapors. They got a big ass following. Is it is it a weed in there? Or, that, or rocks? I, I do have some. Not here, but... You want some? No, I don't smell. Oh, okay, okay. I have some over here. That's probably why it smells. I don't, I don't even smell it. Oh, then fuck it. <laughs> That's just the flavor. It's a good vape, you know? Are, they, are those for charity, too? Nah, it's just for money. <laughs> yeah. Um, Just a vapor page where I sell them. You know, I post a picture mm. with the link to the website. They go. Is that where you get so many followers from? Kind of. Yeah, out there. What's with the the symbols like? That's my brand, you know. Um, but basically, it's um, like what what it means is basically like, you gotta experience like the negative, and like the positive to like be complete in a way. You feel me? Um, it's like a balance type of thing. Like, Mm -hmm. it's like there's no yin yang or whatever, but they just went with that. It basically to me means balance. Uh, Um, experience like just a lot of. But did you know that when you were like choosing them? Or are you just like... Yeah, I chose it very specifically. Uh-huh. You know, triangles, like, they have certain um, subconscious effects on people. Like, they they, they give away, like, like intelligence. Like, sometimes, you know, like, um, confidence, you know, different shapes. They have different, like... Like in Zelda? Yeah. Like, yeah, how they have the trigram? Stuff like that, yeah. You know, actually, like, <clears throat> you know, my fan base, we're getting off topic, though, but... Um, I started developing my fan base through Zelda. Her. I had a Zelda mixtape, you know, and um, GFX loved that shit. It was just some, um, yeah. like, instrumentals. Like, I, I paid a GFX friend, Louis Hayes, I paid him, like, you know, whatever, mm. to, to make a beat. I'd be like, yo, here's the instrumental, like, here's the, the video game level, whatever. Mm. I want you to make an instrumental on it. And then I would just, like, rap, rap on it, like, you know? Mm. And I went through, like, um, forums and blogs for Zelda. I just posted it there. Mm. Like Reddit and shit like that, you know, Instagram yeah. just following like thousands of Zelda people and just like, like watch show real quick. Are you good at Are you good at using Reddit? Cause I'm trying to get into it. Not really. My, I'm just there. Like I just post here and there, but um, there's a lot of potential there. Yeah, I've seen that. That's why I'm like trying to get into it. Cause I see like Reddit has like, cause everyone's like community is like like separated, you know. Nah, yeah. So it's like like really specific. Um, let me show for example like. It's one of the instrumentals you see. Yeah, there's no video to it. But it's like basically like the Zelda shit. I try not to put so much because I don't yeah, want you to get like copyright, you know? Oh shit. Do another one, right? <laughs> no, um, but no, I yeah, for you. Because I, I, I like to like use like different instrumentals for like my beats too, like from like video games and stuff that I played. Okay, okay. Because that's like what I grew up on, you know? I feel you. Zelda's one of my favorite games, you know? Well, um, so you played a lot of video games growing up? Yeah, you say that. Um, Mostly like Zelda and soccer games, shit like that. Oh, like FIFA, like 20, whatever? Yeah. 
Alright, let's get back to the story though. Freaking yeah. um at the at the club there. Just, like, whatever, send me up. <laughs> so off topic. Uh-huh. Um alright. So um one day the girl goes up to me. She's like, Look, I know the girls they give you this percentage, you know, like one fifty. If you give me the guy, I'll give you three hundred, I don't care. Like please I need the money, please, please. And you could stay with me after work, it'll be a lot of fun. It's in Dan, I was like, Yeah. Yeah, fuck yeah, this girl's hot. Yeah, yeah, fuck yeah, money. Ooh, yeah. What? Cause she was fine. He said. Cause she was fine, and it was just like <laughs> she was giving me more money. Like she basically kept paying me like one fifty extra to like get her a customer, and then offering me free sex in the morning after work. Uh-huh. You know, so I was like, hell yeah. You yeah, mon- yeah, you get money and sex. So. Uh-huh. I was like, fuck <laughs> yeah, let's, let's do this. You know, I got you. Don't worry, I got you a customer. Uh-huh. I got you a customer. You know, blah uh, blah. <clears throat> um. But I'm so so, so stupid. Uh-huh. Like you know, I'm in a little room, like you know, I'm talking a little thing. Yeah. And then I walk out like to like the Viet, like to the main floor, mm-hmm. and there's just like this like kind of like rich looking guy, like like not too rich, but so you know, I just he was like flossing. Yeah, he was just there by himself. Though. I was like just like too easy, like he was just there. Yeah. You know, because I just go when they were like by themselves, you know, whatever. I talk to him, mm-hmm. and then I talk to him, and he's like, "Yeah, I want a girl. I'm ready. Let's go. How much? Six hundred. Yeah. Here's the money. All right, just bring the girl." You know, so I go, I get the money, go to the girl, give her the money, and she goes to the guy, and then they call me to the office right there in the radio, Sebastian Gulap is right now. And I was like, fuck. I just Did felt it, like, I was like, fuck, so, yeah, it's not right. Yeah. It happened right away, like, right after they get the money to the girl, go to the office right now, Sebastian. And I was like, fuck. Uh-huh. So I go to the office, there's two cops, um, and the managers. There's a like, camera there, and look, Sebastian, we got you on camera, citizen prostitution. Blah, 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 this and that, and and that, and and that. So no one else was doing it there? Everybody was doing it. It was just corrupt. Uh-huh. Bro, the, the, that was in North Miami. Those chief of police, they're all in prison right now for corruption. The chief of police? Like three of them. Really? From that era, I was like 2012. Wait, don't you still work there? I work at Madonna's now. Oh. Madonna's and Booby Trap. Oh, uh, I think you said since the beginning. Since the beginning, yeah. No, no, I mean like, no, that you work at Tizzy. No, no, But yeah, uh-huh. Um, basically. This is the one right next to KOD, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, uh-huh. uh-huh. Um, they were like, you, you know, you get arrested, come to work tomorrow, because these people will get arrested, but the girls will get arrested for, for the same shit. Wait, wait, what do you mean? Like, people in the, in the club will get arrested for, for the same shit every once in a while, mm. the undercover operation, whatever, and they'll go get arrested, pay the bond, and come to work the next day, mm. you know? And they told me, like, yeah, you could do that, but you could just leave and not come back, like, you're not going to work anymore. So the, so the cops didn't even care? Nah. Fair. Cops for the whole night with girls, everything. Uh. Got them in jail right now, look like they're in prison right now. The, co- the same cops? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the main police guys from uh, North Miami Beach, all of them. So if you did that shit now, like, you wouldn't get away with it, right? Nah. I mean, everybody there, like, the Tootsies, the managers, they all got um, embezzlement charges. They were robbing the oh, people. Like, it's crazy. Wait, is Tootsies like a, like a franchise? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. They got 25 strict clubs in America. They make money, yo. Mm. Um, What's oh wait, uh, what? Is the story gonna keep going or? Yeah. Oh yeah. Wait. So freaking, I get fired, yo, and I'm going crazy, bro. Cause the thing is that like, Dude. my expenses there were insane at the moment. What do you mean? Like yes. I had to make like five thousand, support everything like a month, you know, like maybe even more, bro. Like, um, pay my dad's lawyers, pay my own lawyers, mm-hmm. my my mom's lawyers, the rent. Why do you have lawyers? Um, I was trying to get my my immigration things going uh. on. You know? Were you getting into like any trouble at all? Yeah, got arrested a few times for selling butt. Uh-huh. Um, actually sold butt like dirty. I used to drive from here to Tennessee. You no, know. sure. Yeah, <laughs> let me tell you what happened. Um, so I mean, I was sold. I was sold. Like you know, I was man. Whatever. Fuck it. I was sold butt. Mm-hmm. Like you know, like um, high school. You know, dance does whatever, and then I just selling O's here and there. Wait, where'd you go to high school? At? Ferguson. Ah, uh-huh. uh-huh. You know, um. Just did it like as a side thing, you feel me? Just came like a little side income. Mm. I just to my friends, really, you know? Yeah. Um, but then after I got fired, bro, like I was, like, remember, I got fired actually the January 1st of 2013. Mm. The day they fired me, they like, fired. And I was tripping out. I was like, fuck, where else I'm gonna work to make 500 bucks a day? Like, where else? Like, what the hell? Like, tripping out. You didn't have Uber back then, right? Nah. Oh. No, it's nothing really. I don't even know. Um, I was tripping. Like, Oh, like what the hell I want to do like oh my god even if I work at a job I'm making 12 bucks an hour I'm only gonna make this much money it's not gonna add up no like ah no, just, uh, just. Were, you, were your brothers and sisters having like any jobs they were um, um. 
They were in school. They couldn't work at all? I didn't let them uh, at the beginning. Mm. I was like, nah, like, you're not working. Like, I got this. You go to school. Like, you know, whatever. I was still young. My sister back then was like 13. My little brother was like 15, you know? Oh, Sorry. Oh. Um, so I didn't let them. I was like, nah, like, I don't want you guys to work. I want you guys to just go to school, whatever. At that point, though, they, they started helping, but it's still like, there was a process because they were still in school, whatever, when, yeah. I, when I lost the job. Oh. Um, well, that night, I was like crying, like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Like, this and that, whatever. Um, I remember like going to a park and I just started like looking at the sky, and I was like, you know what, bro? Like, fuck it. If you, if you, could, if you put your mind to something, you could do it. Like, fuck it. Like, by the end of this year, you're not gonna work for nobody. Like, you're not. Like, ah, uh, like, you don't have that mentality. Like, mm-hmm. you're not gonna work for nobody. Like, fuck it. Like, ah, uh, like that, you know, crazy. Um, the next day, I started working on a car wash, just like that, bam. Yeah, like um, your own car wash? You no, like, uh, uh, random, my friend's car wash, whatever. Mm-hmm. That shit was grueling, bro. It was from 7.30 in the morning to 7.30 at night, 12 hours, just some, uh, you know, like. They washing thing. cars? Yeah. But, you know, you make kind of good money, you know, but it was something that was immediate. Yeah. And then, um, I applied for a, a security job mm-hmm. and they gave me a night nice shift so f- um, for one month I was you know what I think it was a security job to be like, like a two week process three week process whatever you have to get like a license in you like a security yeah license. I paid some guy <laughs> it's funny oh, right. <laughs> pay that. Um, um, gave me a license whatever but still just waiting like three weeks I was working at the car wash mm-hmm. and then at the end um, they're like the security was a really good security job it was some place called the Santa Maria on Brickle it's mm-hmm. like where well, a bunch of bidders live it's oh, like well, b- billionaires live, oh, a lot of uh. people money lived there, you know. Yeah. Um, so like a screen process, all of that shit, whatever. Um. They gave me a two weeks training, but it wasn't even paid, so I had to keep working at the freaking car wash. Yeah. And I worked there seven in the morning, seven at night. Take the, take um, bus home, whatever. Get home like around eight thirty. Mm-hmm. Take a shower, sleep to like ten, like an hour and a half, bro. And then go to work from eleven, to seven in the morning. And then go to the car wash. Yeah. Did that for like two weeks, bro. Crazy, like, crazy. Um, but then I got the security job and I left mm-hmm. the other shit. Was it hard car- washing cars all day? Yeah, man. Blisters, everything. Oh, like, uh, damn. But I was like determined. I was like, ah, like, you know, like. Yeah. They're stopping me. Ah, whatever. You never wanted to quit? Doing that? Nah. At that moment, nah, I was too determined. Yeah. I was like, it's just like, no, it's a struggle. Like, you know, I feel like a purpose. You know, like, you know, if you get through it, you get through anything. Mm. You know, like, this is it. It's like, like the universe putting this out for you like mm-hmm. the universe doesn't give like hard shit to people that they can't overcome it like you know like yeah. it's a test you know whatever um I got a security job and during that time um I remember like reading online about the vapors the industry how it was just blowing up it was just starting it was 2013 it's mm-hmm. like freaking almost five years ago um it started saying how like this business was gonna be like a multi-billion dollar business in a few years Mm. And there was no competitions and that's like damn bro it's a good idea to just like open up a internet thing like this and that whatever. Mm. My cousin, cause my cousin worked in a customer service for one of these, for, um, for one of the, one of the first companies. He was working in the phone calls, you know whatever. Yeah. And then um, it's messed up, but we, we we like we hacked all the the things. We just took right. all their their um, customers, customers, distributor, all that cr- everything you know, and then just made our own business. Like that, we call the same customers and we're like, yo, you know, we're getting it for 60, we're doing it for 30. Uh-huh. We're still getting it for like a dollar, you know? Yeah. So we just got like, we got, we got, we got, um, got suit and everything though, <laughs> but they couldn't prove it, yeah? Like, mm-hmm. did they win? No, I couldn't prove it. Oh, damn. They suited them, <laughs> whatever. Um, so you guys would go to court all the time? We didn't go to court, like, it was just like a paperwork, whatever, you know, uh-huh. like, uh, bullshit. Um, we started doing that while I'm working. At the security, mm. we opened up a kiosk in International Mall, and it started doing well. But I'm working both jobs, you know? Yeah. I'm sleeping one, two hours, one, two hours, whatever, but I'm determined, yo, it's my kiosk. I want to make my own business. Bam, bam. So I was sleeping, I wasn't working. It was doing really, really good. But where are you getting the vape, the vape pens from? Like China. Just, so, like, you were just order, make, ordering them? Like, did you, like, design them or anything? You just, like, ordered them? I ordered them, the, bro. Just with our own, like, we just put this, the, our own logo on it. Uh-huh. Not this one, this is some new shit. Oh. Um, <coughs> the profit margin was insane, man. You got the pens like this pen will cost me like, like this setup like this like, five bucks, mm-hmm. set for a hundred. For real? Yeah. But the rent was, the rent of those models is four four thousand five thousand dollars. For the kiosk. A month. Oh damn. 
So, I mean, you still make money, though, but... Do you make enough? Yeah. For the first three years, and I just... I had, actually, I had this until May. Start working a security job. At the same time, running the kiosk. Make a lot of money, you know, making money, making good sales, making good sales. Mm -hmm. And I have enough money to open up the second kiosk, which is at Bayside. Mm -hmm. And that actually gives me the opportunity to quit the security job. So, I actually got my own, like, um, own personal business. Mm -hmm. With the vapes, right? With no. the vape. Yeah. And that was six months after I got fired from Tootsie's. Oh, wow. Um, but yeah, but it was crazy, but I was working, like, for those six months, like, day in, day out, like, just no sleep, no sleep, no sleep. Mm. An hour, 30 minutes, here and there, like, it was crazy. Mm. And then I got the kiosk, and I was working crazy. I was working on freaking 10 a.m. to 11 at night, but still, it was, like, my own thing, so it was exciting, you know? Yeah. And I was surrounded by girls, and it was, like, Hooters right there and Victoria's Secrets so with a lot of people, girls walking around. My customers were girls. Yeah. I was just my boys too, you know, whatever. And I was still selling, but you know, like I was still selling, but whatever here and there. Mm -hmm. So um, making good money. Yeah, I made good money. Um, and then I started selling, but like again, like a lot. Like I started meeting people at the base side, mm -hmm. and they were from out of state, and you know, get to know them, whatever. And they'll be like, "Yo, so you know the bud? Like, I'm getting over here this price. Can you do like a better price? And I'll do like much better price, like." I still have a lot of money. Mm. So I started building connects and I'll deliver to them like to like Fort Myers, Tallahassee, Atlanta, Tennessee, but they'll pay me good money. Mm. Like for the trip alone, like um if, like if it was like a tour trip, they'll pay me like four hundred bucks. You know? For like just from bucks. here to like Naples and come back. Oh. They gave me like four hundred bucks and then whatever money I made off the the, the butt. Oh. Which I didn't know how much money I made. Mm. In Tallahassee they paid me like seven hundred, like eight hundred bucks like in one day. Oh, and then with the butt I was making like a thousand a day with the with the butt. I, I know a friend uh, one of my friends was making like he was making like twenty grand though. He was coming from Colorado. Yeah, you know, probably doing a big operation. <clears throat> I was just doing it like one single handedly, like oh. and those people weren't buying like a lot of things. I was just doing it. Yeah. For doing it for the thrill really, bro. Like for the sure. excitement, for the for the hell of it, like to live life. Like, yeah, you know, going through it, you know, like whatever. Did you ever get stopped? Like on the on your way? And the way you no know, I had rules. And I would have smoked, speed limit. But one time I got arrested on the way back. For real? And I was so heated, bro. Because, like, I remember, like, I dropped the guy off, whatever, you know, the, the, the butt off, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting on the highway. And I rolled up a blunt, like, in this parking lot, whatever. Um, I, my rule was that, yo, do not smoke until you get on the highway. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Which was, I didn't smoke anyways. I was driving, I was driving. Like, to get on the highway. Because when the highway, I felt safe. Like, you know, like, mm -hmm. in the city, it's all dark and shit, whatever. It's five in the morning, like, in the little tiny ass town. Freaking Lee County, or whatever. Mm. Um, so I looked suspicious, but in the, in the highway, it was like I was like free. Yeah. You know, I felt like secure. Like, oh, like, who's gonna pull me over here? Like, I'm not driving a speed limit. My lights are good. Like, what the hell? I'm just yeah. cruising. Um, but then a cop went behind me and he followed me up for like five minutes down this road. And I was like, bro, he can't, in my head, he can't pull me over. I'm doing a speed limit. My lights are good. This and that. Right when I get on the turnpike, mm. he pulls me over and I was like, fuck. Ugh. Like, what? You know, but he comes to me in the, the to the side, and he's like, "Yo, I was like, yo, I get pulled over," and he's like, "Look, um, one of your tag lights is off, it's, oh, oh. like the tag light, like your license plate has like three little tiny lights, yeah, like four, just one of them is that off. that's illegal? Yeah, but nobody gets pulled over for that. Yeah, unless they like freaking want to, like that's mm. like you know, and then the, um, bro, at that moment, like I already knew like." They were gonna switch my car because first of all, I was driving with no license. Mm -hmm. I drove with no license for five years. I had no yeah. license at all. So if I got pulled over, the rest boom right away. Mm -hmm. Um, or sometimes I get pulled over and they'll bounce. Mm -hmm. Somebody pick me up or whatever. But I was somewhere else, like whatever. What do you mean they like so someone pick you up? Well, so I got like in those five years that I was driving with no license, I got pulled over like ten times, and you just talk yourself out of it. Right. Like, Look, I'm here. Like I'm going through my papers. I can't, but I'm getting to work. Um, I don't want to go to jail. I have, I have no arrest, please. And they'll be like, okay, fine, just wait here. Call somebody to pick you up, like, in mm -hmm. the car. Like, you know, someone, somebody will come and pick up, pick me up, you know, the living yeah. house. But I don't wear there, though. Um, but the guy goes to, like, the guy's like, is there anything I should know, whatever, you know, that look. But to be honest, I have no license and I have weed in the car. And I have $4,000 in the car. You know, and that's for my business. But tonight that you can why search you the car. Say, why do you have to say the money? Because now they're going to say that it's from the bud and they could take him uh. you know and I had bud bagged out too like a few doves like just just like a dumbass uh -huh. um, and the guy's like wow like really appreciate your honesty like damn you know wow I didn't want to pull you over that you were drunk you know like mm -hmm. this and that like wow you know whatever but still like you know I gotta 
gotta take you in, but look, I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna say that this is your, like your your selling. Make your possession charge only, and you keep the money or whatever you know. Mm -hmm. So he was nice in that way. Um, he freaking he lets me out. Like he not lets me out. He takes me to jail, or whatever you know. Mm -hmm. Um, and that jail was in some white ass city, yo. And those people were assholes, yo. Like they were really racist, to be honest. Mm -hmm. They were like it was in know, Naples, right? It was like a little bit more up, some place called Lehigh, oh, right. in Lee County, whatever. Um, I just felt like a lot, of, like a lot of anger. Like during that time, I was sleeping two or three hours. Um, I was going, I was, I was pretty stressed out. Like I was living in lab, but I was stressed out. Like, I had a lot of freaking responsibilities, like yeah. a lot. And I was young, and I was playing soccer, which was my dream when I was young. And that shit was like fading away. Like that dream, you know, like fuck, I'm not gonna play. Like mm -hmm. my life's a lie. Like my whole life, like. That vision, my whole life growing up, all I trained was for nothing. Like, what the hell? Yeah. I see what people, they're 40 and they're bitter. Like, I see it. They never got to do what they wanted. Like, they never got to, like, live their dream. Like, I see it. What's the point of living? I'm getting those crazy ideas. Mm. Um, freaking, at that point also, it was like six years after my parents got arrested. So I was like, like, already losing hope. Like, it was been six years. Like, I'm not even doing it through my soccer. Did you, did you know that um, they were getting on eight years? Mm-hmm. Um, we didn't know that but we thought we were going to get deported but they didn't uh -huh. um, so whatever I get, I get I'm in the jail like I feel really like embarrassed you're like not angry like ah mm -hmm. and then I remember like they, they take me to um to a little thing and they're like they're like alright get naked like take your clothes off and I'm like okay and whatever fuck I take my clothes off I leave my underwear on and they're like no everything you know there's three guys um, wait in the jail or the police the police but then in the jail Oh. You know, because I got to get in the fucking orange bullshit. Oh, yeah. Um, But still, just like, like at that moment, I feel like, like I don't know, like, it's, uh, like, uh, yeah. Because the way, the way they were going up, it was three of them, like, just like, ah, uh, like, okay, man, like, you know how it goes, you know, whatever. And it's like, and I just got angry, though, like, <clears throat> like I felt this dark energy, though, like, really dark, like, <clears throat> like that. Yeah. Like, um, And I remember looking at them like that, like, into my underwear, mm -hmm. super slow, though. I looked at him like with this crazy face, though, like crazy, yeah. just crazy, though, like angry, crazy, because you think it's crazy. And they're like, I right, um, bent over and cough, you know? It's mm. Michelle in my ass, I guess. Um, mm. And I bent over and I go, <coughs> <coughs> like that to them, like, this, like that crazy, yo, like that. Uh. Um, and they left me alone, they gave me my uniform, and right away they take me out to take the mug shot. So that mug shot, bro, looked crazy, bro. I'm like, right. Like insane look in my eye, though. Like crazy, like, but like determined look. Um. But I was still like really angry for like you know though I had, that was like actually like my third arrest at that point. Mm. I got arrested like for other butt things like for other years and I was just like, like a, at a low point. Also, I had I had a girlfriend for a long time there. And I got married from my paper this and that whatever, and that shit went to shit and I was you were just married? like yeah. Oh. Um. And that went to shit and I was just working like no social life like. Like sad, like fuck, like what am I doing? Like the fuck is life. Mm -hmm. There's no point. I'm not happy. No point. Um, I get arrested, whatever. The next week, um, but this whole time I'm battling like suicidal thoughts, bro. Man, like I'm just battling like suicide. Like, um, like even if I was like kind of happy, just like, bro, I don't see a point. Like, I'm getting the wrong thing. Like in my head, I was in the yeah. hole. Like, like yo, there's no point in this. Like, I'm not, I'm not gonna, be, I'm not gonna be happy. Like, I'm not playing soccer. I'm not gonna be happy. Though. Like, I'm not gonna be happy. Like, what's the point to struggle to suffer? That whatever, just die right now. Mm. And like I just go to the next dimension or whatever. What if it's all fake? What if it's all in my head? Like, what the fuck? What you know? What the fuck? What if the the answer is death? What if I just die and like, I'm there like they're waiting for me? You know, mm. whatever. Getting okay, those crazy ideas. You're like crazy, crazy. And I was sleeping like one, two hours, bro. Working like a maniac, drinking, smoking. So I was like, fuck, like crazy. That was literally, literally crazy. Mm. Um, and freaking the next week, bro, I like, had like a little crazy moment. I guess like psychotic break I don't know mm. and I'm driving in the car whatever and then I'm like fuck it like I'm just gonna drive off the road like fuck it like fuck it like fuck it like fuck it this is it mm. you know if I die like it's a car so nobody's gonna feel bad like my family the stigma suicide they're gonna be with that like fuck it let's do this mm. Arr, like you know and I go like 80 miles per hour like whatever and then um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a one, it's before like right now there's like a bunch of bridges there but before it was on 152 Mm -hmm. The exit was like that, and then there was like the turnpike. There was like a little thing. This like you could either go to like 
turnpike or like one fight two exit. Mm-hmm. Um, there was like a little like lake thing there, and like some walls and shit. Right there on the one fifty second. Yeah, but that was before. It was a different setup. Uh, like way different. Now it's bridges. There's land there. Like before, it was like a big ass hole there. Uh-huh. It was like in two thousand. This is two thousand and fourteen. Uh-huh. Um, super different. Um, bro, I just like. Like just instead of like going away, I just go straight. You know, mm-hmm. and I got lucky too because there was some poles. I just went right between like some two poles. I could get them like straight on or whatever, mm-hmm. but I didn't. Um, I just freaking like fly out like just like into the freaking shit like mm-hmm. and crash nigga like. I remember like it's crazy, bro. From like the moment that like like you know I go over the 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 freaking road to the moment I crash, it's like five seconds. But you don't understand like those five seconds, yo. Like, it's traumatizing. When you're about it. No, I've been in an accident before. Yeah? Like, mm-hmm. so much shit goes through your head. Yeah. Like, is it gonna hurt? Am I gonna die? It's in that. Like, was it worth it? Oh my god, what the fuck? Ah, ah, like, you know what that? Bam, bam, bam. And I remember, like, um, I even tried to pull, like, the wheel like, a little bit to, like, not to hit the wall. Like, at the end, I guess, like, I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Damn, you're giving me flashbacks right now. <laughs> I, I was there. I feel you. I remember um, shit. And I remember, like, I just said, I let go of the wheel. I had no seatbelt on. And I was like, fuck it. Like, fuck it. Like mm-hmm. that, you know, I just like crash, nigga, like, bah, like you know. But I think about it, I scrambled out all the energy, like I was like, oh, all the negativity, it went out, it went away in that, in that like, fucking death deal. Mm-hmm. Um, I crash, I, I guess I got knocked out because I wake up, you know, it was like five in the morning, mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh shit. Do you feel like you died? No, that was I just was like in shock. I don't know, it was traumatizing. Mm-hmm. Cause I wake up and my car squished, like you know, like I'm in my, I'm in my driver's seat. And the car's like indented to like here, mm. like oh, I'm just safe, dog. Like I'm just like that, like, little cocoon, or whatever. Um, and I see this little thing that my grandma had gave me to protect me, you know, like right there. I guess fell on my wallet, like I don't know the floor. I was like, what? I was like, no. Like what the fuck? Like no, oh my god. Like oh my god. Like the the, the realness hits me. Yeah. Like oh my god, what the fuck they're just doing? Like what the fuck? Like what the fuck? Like just fought up the car. Like fuck. Like oh my god. Like. And I just felt like, oh my god, my arm broke. I felt like little cuts. And I felt like little things. I was like, yo, I probably have a big ass gash in my head. But I didn't feel nothing. Mm. I didn't have nothing. Um, but I get out the, the car. And I see them like half water, like half in, like crazy shit. But I have butt in the car. I have no license. I got arrested last week. I was supposed to go to court. Like, I was some crazy shit. Um, I just got everything from the car and I left. <laughs> For real? I left. Like, just, no cops came or anything like no, that? No, it was middle of the night. And it was like in a hole, bro. Like, there's no way you could see it. Like, it was just like there. You know? They saw it in the morning, though. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to get with torture, but then when the torture, they saw the torture, and then they came to my house and this and that, whatever. They came to your house? Yeah. Why? Because of the car accident. But, um. You know, no, I mean, like, they, they, they. The police? How they find you? Like, the license plate? No, tell you right now. Um, so, whatever. Like, I thought that, that after the car accident, like, finally, when I called my sister to pick me up, she picks me up and I'm like in this freaking the emotional state like what the fuck what did I do like oh my god like you know uh, no sleep you know I go home um, I told, I told um, my, my mom's already out there but my mom got out earlier than my parents and my dad mm. so I told my mom like yo um, this happened um, just call a tow truck the car's over there just get a tow truck please I just want to go to sleep I need to sleep I just need to sleep I haven't sleep like you know I was going crazy mm. um I fall asleep, and I guess when she goes, she told me when she gets a tow truck, um, the, the cops still hadn't seen the car, but when they saw the tow truck like going like kind of like down and like getting a fucking car halfway in the water, like they stopped, you know, the freaking they stopped on the highway. Like, What's going on here? Mm. Um, and then my mom was there. She said, "Oh, my son, he got in a car accident last night. Um, this and that, and he just he was afraid because he had no papers, this and that, whatever. He just left it, and he came home, whatever. So then the police, oh, that's fine, you know." I understand. We just want to talk to him, you know. Mm. So they came to my house, um, and they told me, "Yo, what happened? Were you drinking?" I was like, "No." Anybody else in the car? I was like, "No." Um, I was like, "No." I look. I just fell asleep. I told my dad, "I fell asleep. Like I just fell asleep. I was working a lot. I fell asleep, um, and I just left because I was scared." You know, that's what I told you. Gotta tell people that when you see like in in the court, you don't get to be scared because then you you don't know that like, people don't know how you're gonna react when you're scared, so you could like defend yourself. Like, oh, it's not you. Wait, what do you mean? Um, like in court. Like, when you're scared, for example, like, people kill because they're scared and they get away with it. Mm. You know, so I left because I was scared. Like, literally, you can't, that's not me. You get me? Like, I'm not yeah. like, 
fully like responsible for leaving the scene because I was like in the state, you know, whatever. Oh, okay. Um, they were like, okay, look, um, just go to court, and if you go to court, we'll dismiss it. I was like, yes, you know, whatever. So I went to court. Um, but um, bro, the thing was, during that time, I was depressed, huh? Like I was like, what the fuck? Like what the fuck is life? Um, so many fuck ups, you know, like mm. no, then just um, no soccer, no like real purpose, no like not no purpose, no purpose, just work and no goal in sight, like nothing, just like work, work every day, like yeah, same shit, same shit, for same shit, for nothing, just like with no purpose, like no real purpose, like I'm like, I'm be stuck here, I'm be stuck here, like bam. Um, also with the freaking the car accident, I was traumatized, you know, I hear the yell, yeah, like the ah. Oh! Freaking, oh, close my eyes, I go to sleep, and I hear that yell, hear it, hear it. Um, and then that's when I started doing music, bro. Like, I had to remember, I was supposed to put the instrumentals on. I didn't like the radio, the music that was on right there. Mm-hmm. So um, I put instrumentals on. I remember put, putting the Kendrick Lamar, the recipe instrumental. Mm-hmm. And um, I freaking, I'm at the metro because I mean at that point I took away my license like I can't drive at all like you know there's no cars anyways yeah so I'm taking like the the bus from 745 to get to work at 10 I'm at the metro all oh, like this super sad mm. um but I'm in the instrumental right and I get in a trance like and I start like freestyling and I freestyle this whole song like about like this whole experience that I was going through mm-hmm. which is called inconvenience so about the suicide or whatever um you're rapping in Spanish? in English oh. and then um Bro, like after you know, after I was done with the with the little like freestyle in my head, I feel like relieved, or, like calm, like oh, I feel like good now, like I feel like like calm, like oh my god, like I could, oh my god, music, let's do music, that's gonna be my way, like music, let's do it, like you know, like that's gonna be your 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 release, like like that's what you're gonna go for, like the art, like, do it, do it, do it, do it. Mm. So from then I just started doing music like crazy, yo, like from 2014 till now. Um, but that first year went really, really hard. I mean, all those videos or whatever, you know. Mm. I put it on World Star. I got a who, who's doing the videos? You're doing them. GFX did one, and then one of my boys did them. So I mean, like the the ones that you have all over your page. Those. Those are the ones. My phone. You do those? Yeah. Huh. Mm. How did you get like you get the idea to do that? Bro, just um. Every day I was just working on the Instagram. Mm. I just I just thought about the pattern, yo. Like just I had to freaking have like a brand or a pattern different, like. And then the Instagram gives you the three columns. Mm. So I saw an opportunity to just be like really organized. And um, just so a different way to showcase like what I got, you know? Yeah. Basically. Um, but yeah, I've been going hard for it, bro. Um, the last year though, just working. Bro, I got, the, the kiosk is a more, it's a more story, like whatever. Mm. Um, that ended up closing it like a few months ago, there was no money in it anymore. Um, Cause a lot of people were getting to vapes. Yeah, I've had the days. People and the my customers were mostly tourists, and they're already getting all their their vapes in their country. Mm-hmm. Before I started to them like, "Oh, you want to quit smoking cigarettes? Yeah, you like it? Yeah. Are right, you gotta buy the system and you gotta buy liquids for like a year because mm-hmm. you go back to your country. It makes sales for like three hundred bucks, you know. But then that stopped, so barely breaking through. I was making just enough to pay the kiosk and like an employee and shit, no profit. So yeah, I just closed it. Yeah, so there's no point. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me tell you about the girls on the base side, mm-hmm. real quick. Um, so after the after the car after the car accident, like I have a whole mentality like on life, you know, like I'm just gonna like do me, like f- like fuck what anybody thinks, just be happy, and just like you know do me. Yeah. Um. Oh, and I started. Wait, real quick, cause now you can keep going. I just want to make sure that this is like hundred percent like up here, cause yeah, I don't want to. So, so this has been six feet with. Don't worry. Good to change your Thanks for having me. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching. Alright. Yeah, what were you saying about the Bayside? So, whatever. Bayside has a lot of freaking beautiful girls. Like, really, really beautiful, beautiful girls mm-hmm. that shop there. Because uh, there was a. Bayside has a lot of tourists, too, right? Yeah. But also, like, in the like, rich downtown area, all the brick old people. And, all the freaking trophy wives that are like, just live in the apartments. Mm-hmm. All the, you know, they just come down, super fine. Um, I'm still listening, I'm just like, maybe, because I, I, I got to empty out the Sorry. SD card. Uh-huh. So there was one girl, yo, um, super beautiful, yo. I'll show a picture of her real quick. Um, what yeah. kind of girls are you into? Like, Hispanic girls or like, all type of like black girls? All White types. Girls? Uh, type, um, <laughs> and no, no, no limit. You like ring cover? That, that was the girl. She's really pretty, yo. 
Let me just see what the... Uh, that girl. Oh, damn. She a model? Yeah, she, she was like... But she never do model, but she could have been a model, damn. She was a beautiful body, yo. Uh-huh. Um, but she was like married to some rich guy then. She was 29, I was 22 at the moment. Uh-huh. I was about uh, 23. Oh, damn. Um, whatever, I started hollering at her for like, you know, just calling every day because she was a customer. Mm-hmm. She was buying the weed oils. So I see her like once a week and I just kept trying and trying. You said weed oil? Weed oil? Yeah, out of front there in the kiosk. Oh, so like, that, was that legal? No. <laughs> I got away with it though. Uh, I haven't made a video on it too. Oh, uh, yeah, fuck it. Uh, um, yeah. So whatever, like the girl, like I finally could wish to like eat with me. I started dating her, like, you know, like, like little lunch dates. She goes to Bayside mm-hmm. once a week. Um, you know, like we just progressing, but it's like a whole year though. Um, uh-huh. we were kissing and shit like that, you know, but we don't like take the next step, like you know. You didn't have cover her. Like no, we have we have fought at that moment. Yeah. Um, and then I remember that like, one day we I go to we go to Hooters together, you know. Mm-hmm. We had like a few drinks, whatever. And she was like, Sebastian, like I feel guilty, like you know, I have a mask and that, whatever. For a know. year? Huh? For a year? I mean, like for a year was customer for like six months. Uh-huh. And then like for six months trying to holler at her, and then finally get into like date to get into date her like at the towards the end of the year or whatever. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, but like a whole year though. This girl was beautiful. Like, a process. Yeah. Um. Freaking. We go to Hooters. She 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 says she like bro, the girls like right there the bartenders were three girls. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's talking to me. I feel really bad. Like you know. And I was like, look, bro. Like you are here? It's because there's something missing in your life. Like, just like what you said at the, the same thing you sell, you know, the same thing like that you know yeah and she said oh my god you know what I'd rather look so this, look, you don't want to be 33 and regret not living your life like yeah you want to stay with him that's fine he has stability but like you really want to live life you want to like be 33 and be like damn I didn't do what I wanted like you know I didn't really like enjoy she said oh my god you know what like you said that because you actually lived through that like you know yeah uh-huh. and um but I know that's what she wanted to hear also um she said oh my god you know what yeah oh my god Sebastian yeah like, you know what yeah, you know, whatever, boom. I ended up going to, like, her house or whatever and fucked or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but the point is that, when, I remember when I finished saying she said, oh, my God, yeah. I looked to the side, and there was three girls from Hooters. I was, like, listening. Like, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck does this nigga? And they knew that I worked at a kiosk there, you know? Mm-hmm. But I wasn't buff, and I wasn't rich. So this, this girl's like, what the fuck? You know? Um, so in the next thing, I'm working, and some girl from Hooters comes. Hey, hey, what's up? You got, you know, vapors, you know? And then I was like, hey, weren't you the girl from yesterday? She's like, oh, my God, yeah, I think I saw you. Oh, my God, yeah, you're really funny. Oh, my God. I was like, uh, yeah, you know, get her number and shit like that. Yeah. Fuck the boom. Then the next week, this is a fine-ass girl. But fine, fine, fine. The next week, other girls will come from Hooters. From Hooters. Like, you know, other girls from, like, hot girls will come to my kiosk. Mm. They were like, hey, what the fuck does this nigga have? Like, he has no money. He's not fucking buff-ass nigga. Like, what the fuck? I want to find out. Like, mm. what the fuck? Like, you know, just confidence, really. I just didn't give a fuck. And they just, they just fucking transmitted that shit, like, just confidence. Like. But, like, how do you know, like, like that she, that they're missing something in their life? Just feeling. What is the fact that they're going to you? The fact that, like, they're going to the kiosk, like, why are you trying to firmly have a boyfriend? Like, you know, mm-hmm. like, why are you trying to, like, tell me to go get an ice cream with you, like, if you were a guy? Yeah. Like, you know, get in their heads, like, think what you're doing, like, why? That's your soul, like, telling you, like, they want to have fun. Like, this is your soul telling you're trapped. You know, that's your, that's your soul telling you to change, like, have fun, like, enjoy life, like, be happy, man. And they'll fall for it, you know? Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Freaking picked up, like, fucking hundreds of girls. or like, a hundred, I swear to God. Sure. I worked there for three years. Wait, at the, at at the, the kiosk or? At the kiosk. Oh. Grab the tootsies, you know, whatever. I took that break. I don't started working at the, um, the clubs again a year ago. Mm-hmm. So that those three were just straight, freaking getting girls. <laughs> did they know? Were, were you making music at that time? Yeah. So like, what did they think about your music when you showed them to, when you showed it to them? That was crazy, but they were like, "Fuck it, nigga, doing him." Uh. Like keep doing him, like just he's different. Just doing him, like you know. Mm. And, you yeah. know, I just they really some of them didn't like it, some some of them loved it. Um, but they help they help me get some girls though, you know. Yeah. I don't know, like, because I, I feel like nowadays a lot of girls don't really like like if they see a guy doing music, they're like, oh, he's doing music. So. I think excuse like, you know, to the girls, hey, look, come on, we still picture with you so my fans can see. You know, stupid shit like that. Yeah. Right. Look at a video, you come on, like just like look at a video, come here, and then like you just hold my hand and you kiss me on the lips, like real fast, come on, just yeah. real snatch like come on, come on, like come on, like you know, you, you, we don't really mean it, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and they'll do it. 
you know. Yeah. Uh. So, um, what was that the end of the story or like? Cause it's nah, not I mean, um, just kept getting girls, bro, the whole time. Until now, just getting girls. So you're in a relationship right now? Yeah, I have a girlfriend actually. For like how long? Uh, since, since April. Oh, really? Yeah, because she's, bro, she freaking, she's different, I guess, you know? No, it's like the other girls that, that you get with? Yeah, like, alright, for example, too, like, this might be, like, the most honest. Any other girl that I dated, like, I had the urge to cheat. Mm-hmm. This one, I don't. So, I'm just chilling. For real? You would yeah. do it? Huh? You would do it? No, I wouldn't. I'm gonna say, like... Like, the other girls. Would I do it? Yeah. I mean, I'll leave them. No, like, you would cheat on the other girls? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll do, be a little sneaky, yeah? I mean, mm-hmm. talking to a few girls at a time. I mean, I was single, but I was talking to this girl and oh, this so girl. They, oh, they just thought that they were, like, together. Yeah, or some of them they, knew. Uh, oh, but they just didn't give a fuck. Um, but just lying to them, you know, like, oh, some of them be like, yo, I don't have a... I'm, you're the only girl I talk to, like, you know, full story, like... No, they wouldn't know. find out? Some would find out, some of them wouldn't. Uh-huh. You know? Um, what was I going to say? Um, well, like, this, the girl, you don't feel like you're... Oh, yeah, yeah, so the, the whole time, though, like, you know, whenever I get a girl, you know, I hook up with her and I'll just be like... And she was beautiful and hot and, like... Nice, but I just still want to cook up with another girl. Yeah. And then with this one, I'm just... You don't have, you don't feel that? Nah. So, I mean, she gives me, like, everything I want to in a way, you know? That's how I feel about my girl. That's what's up, though. It's a beautiful feeling. Because she's watching it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> she's going to watch it, though. She, she probably will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. If it's, like, an hour, then she probably won't. Yeah, so I basically, though, I mean, if I got the urge to cheat, I'll just leave her. Yeah. I'll nah, see how I do my relationships, really, to be honest. I'm the same way. Yeah. But yeah, so um, so do you like? Do you talk about that a lot in your music, bro? I have about like about like your life stuff. <laughs> it's all about my life, though. Cause I feel like, cause like when I hear your songs, like they're like really aggressive. The thing is, I, I do have very um chill songs, but some of my best songs are actually the most chill ones. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of anger, I have a lot of, like. Basically, all the anger that I had built up, like, from the years of working, like, the things that, like, from when, when my parents got arrested to, like, mm-hmm. 23, those six years that I'm working, I'm working with a grudge, and I'm pissed off every day, like, I fucking hate this, I fucking hate this, like, ah, uh, ah, uh, but working, like, oh my god, I hate this, what the fuck is that? You, you didn't know? feel like you putting that energy out, put, like, pulled some bad stuff, neg- negativity into you, too? Maybe, maybe, but at that moment, I just wanted to release, mm-hmm. it's like, ah, uh, and I used it, but I really used that freaking anger to, like, do my music and, like... I want to prove people wrong, prove myself wrong, whatever. And just, like, use that anger to, like, promote my shit. Mm-hmm. And, um... Plus, the, ones, the thing is that those, those songs are emotional. Like, you hear my voice, you know? Yeah, I can. So, people, like... They feel it, and they want to hear more. Or they mm-hmm. respect the story. Or, like, yo, they want to hear more, like... Because of the freaking the yeah. voice, you know? Like... Yeah. And so, I think mean, basically everything that I write about is... Stories. Like, about my life. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, different things, like... Um, or just how to go, just stories about picking up girls, fight stories, um, selling bugs, getting arrested, stuff like that. Um, there was one song I did about like how I never did cocaine because I was gonna go crazy. If I did cocaine, I thought I was gonna go crazy, so I never did it. Mm-hmm. Um, do you ever do it? Nah. Oh. That's, it's, so, um, so, so, so it's, it's the last song that I put in one of my Instagram with, in the blue column. Mm-hmm. The last one that I put is that song actually. Um, but yeah, I just said that's my release, bro. Like, that's my only release. Because I don't really talk to, like, what that moment at the beginning. I didn't have much friends, you know, whatever. They were antisocial, so, like, my only release was through music. Mm-hmm. Even though I was, like, in a freaking place with everybody or whatever, I will go home and not tell anybody my problems about, like, how I felt. Yeah. So the music was, like, the way to release it. And mm-hmm. just to tell my story, I guess, you know. So I was like, my music, you know, just straight storytelling, I guess. I do got some after music, too, though, like, space... Alien stuff like that, you know. Do you like? Yeah, I see that a lot. Like you do with your your design. Yeah, yeah. It's basically Saturn with the <clears throat> with the eye. With the all seeing eye right there, yeah. Very yeah, symmetrical. I think, I think it's dope. It's chilling, right? Want to yeah. get a pattern, yo? I feel so sure, yo. You so I used to. I stopped selling them because I've been slacking. Though. I've been to be honest, the last year and a half, and been working. I've been doing that much, but I'm getting back on this music shit the last mm-hmm. few months. Do you perform a lot? Um, I perform. But not too much, bro. I mean, I got a lot of offers to work out at clubs. Mm. And I just... just f- 
fuck, man. I don't know. Get caught up and laugh. I don't even go. I'm just work, 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 work. Yeah, I feel you. Cause um, the mentality was like, yo, I'm, don't, don't go to the show until you feel hundred uh-huh. percent. Um, but you can't that. You can't. You just gotta just go and you, you gotta just push it through. You know. Mm-hmm. Um. I didn't feel ready, I guess. You know, but now I do. Like, I felt like I had too much shit going on to that, whatever. Yeah. But now I'm all about it. <clears throat> but I do a lot of um. Radios, interview stuff like that. Um, my music's on the radios, Spotify, mm-hmm. iTunes, all that, all of that. You have anything Good like planned coming out soon? Like yeah. Any, plan, any big plans? Um, yeah, bro. I got some really good um songs that I'll do some videos for, with GFX or whatever. I really push it, bro. Like really like, um, do a little marketing, you know? Yeah. To prom- prom- I don't. I'm, right now I'm promoting myself at all. I don't have any marketing. I got into this point, you know. Mm-hmm. A little fan base, whatever, you know. Um, but I feel like I'm promoting because the thing is like it's all about exposure. I say like I have really high approval ratings. Mm. Like all my YouTube videos, um, there's very little dislikes. There's some videos that have like five thousand views and zero dislikes, which is insane. Yeah. Straight up like likes. Um and that means it's exposure. That means if like if if a hundred thousand people see it, like ninety percent are gonna love it. Yeah. And then they're gonna buy it. Like you know, so at this point I feel it's all about exposure to be honest. Mm. Maybe organizing my CDs a little bit better and like organizing like the marketing thing, but just exposure, bro. No, of course. I feel I feel I blow up, you know. I really do feel. Do you do you have any advice you want to give anyone like watching this right now? Um, bro, if you don't believe in yourself, don't do it. Like, just believe in yourself a hundred. Like, like, just the only thing, believe it, and just enjoy what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, that's it, bro. Just be yourself. Don't nobody change you, and don't let nobody control your emotions. That like, you're in control of your happiness. Nobody else is. And in your life too, bro. Like, you make your own future. Like, so just always do you. Go for your dreams, you know? Yeah. Basically, yeah. yeah. So, um, anyone you want to shout out? We have 20 people, bro. I forget somebody, they're going to get pissed. Yeah. So, yeah, all my friends and family, really. Yeah. How are you supporting? All my fans, friends and family, you're right. Support mm-hmm. everybody else, yeah. I consider everybody family, they're my fans. To me, they're family. Be honest, I have personal I have a personal relationship with a lot of my fans. You know, they've been following me for like three years. They're really hardcore, very low, they're like cult following, really. Mm. So um, it's a family right there too. Yeah. Yeah, for you. Um, we're gonna find you at <clears throat> Instagram FIFA Castro. Um, YouTube you can search FIFA Castro. You go to Google. FIFA Castro and, and you're like the first one to pop up come up you know SoundCloud links whatever yeah Snapchat FIFA Castro uh, that's about it yeah I'm the only FIFA Castro artist so pretty easy to find so um, they got some good YouTubes on Worldstar I got a video there with Stitches they got like 200,000 views for real? yeah so I got my little fan base going at the beginning oh yeah that's, um, that's crazy yeah I got a few on YouTube little projects coming out whatever yeah no that's what's up so Yeah, so this has been Six Feet with Mm -hmm. FIFA Caster. Yeah.